hello hello and welcome to Catherine's garden and home it's so good to be here with you today I hope that all is well with you and I am so happy to be able to share with you garden information and that we can just have a really fun time here if it is your first time If it is your first time being here with me at Catherine's Garden and Home, I just want to welcome you. <clears throat> and just say that if you are here and uh, you love what we are talking about, gardening, and you want to be a part of this gardening community, then I suggest that you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for more videos because we will be coming on and having discussions about gardening throughout this garden season. And I am really excited about the process. I am excited about what we are doing. And I have been working in my garden book because I am in the Northeast. I am in zone six in the, the Boston area and we just recently had a massive snowstorm, a blizzard, so I definitely can't go outside and do any kind of spring gardening, but I can plan and that is what I've been doing. I've been doing planning here in my uh, journal that I created and it's called a, Gar a Garden to Call My Own, the Intentional Garden Journal for 2022. And if you're interested in obtaining one, then you can go to my website, which is Catherine's Garden and Home, Catherine's Garden Home, L-W-S dot Weebly, W-E-E-B ly.com and someone has joined me no, some people <laughs> good afternoon I think Yankee sister how are you yeah you can't stay for but a short time that's okay and hello Sonia good to see you today also glad to see the both of you all yeah, so I um, I was ready to go, and I, I was trying to delay until 5.30, and I said, why should I? I should just get started. That way I can start to share. And then when we get into the, the, the swing of things, that, um, you know, it'll pick up and pe more people will come. So I'm glad that I I caught you, Miss Yankee, <laughs> Sister Homestead. I'm so glad that you are here with me and also Sonia, faithful Sonia. Thank you so much. Um, I have been working through my notebook or my journal and just trying to see, well, what do I need to do and how do I need to get things done? So it has been um, really fun. I mean, because it's kept me very much more organized and I um, am on the next part because I was looking at uh, rearranging my garden and how it's going to work it, what areas do I want to change and what types of gardening areas or sections do I want to have. And the sections that I really want to have, did you make out okay through the blizzard? Yes, I did. How about you? Did you make out all right too? Did it hit you? I know that you're not too far away from me. And yes, I'm used to blizzards. I've, I grew up in the New England area, and so I am used to blizzards and snow and all of that good stuff. So, um, but the only thing is, I hope that we don't get more snow on top of what we already got, because we got like 24 inches plus, and uh, it was a lot of snow, just a lot, a lot of snow. And um, 
and we were able to, to uh, shovel it. I think we just used a lot of common sense and didn't overtax ourselves. So my husband did most of the, the same day shoveling and then I went out and I helped out and I did whatever he didn't do, I finished. And um, so between the both of us, we were, be, we were able to get it done and it, it was much more wiser than rather trying to, you know, one of us just tackling all of that because it was a lot of snow. And thankfully we have some snow equipment as, um, as well as shovels <laughs> that helped a lot too. And um, we also were able to be out there with our neighbors who also helped out as well. So it was nice. You know, one thing about, hello, Gloria K. How are you? Is called Gloria or uh, Glory K? A Col Coley K. Coley K. Clo Clo I can't see. You got to excuse me. I don't know. Either I need stronger glasses or something. <laughs> oh, Lordy. So, uh, pardon me. I was born in Connecticut myself. We did okay. 13 inches, but you guys got slammed. Yes, we did. Chloe K. <clears throat> Chloe. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Anyway, welcome. Good to have you here with us here at Catherine's Garden at Home. I'm glad that you stopped by. I had it right the first time I said it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> You know, oh, that's good. That's good. I'm kind of, um, I'm glad that you stopped by and that you're here with us. And so, yeah, so what I was saying, yeah, Sunday Backyard Farmer just stopped by to say, hey, still at work, but I will be listening. Well, good to have you. Wow, that's nice. Nice to have you all stop by. <clears throat> I feel honored. I feel honored to have you all with me. Well, I have been working in my book, my journal, and I found that this year, because I've been working through the journal and looking at what is next, that um, it's helping me to think a little deeper about the garden and what I need to put in it and what I'm going to need to be efficient. So um, I've, I've decided, and we've been talking about this, and if you, uh, you've been following along, that we that I want to have a vegetable garden, and I want to have a rainbow vegetable garden. So there were different types of vegetables that I want to get, um, like the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and that each of the different, uh, hello, Cassie, how are you? That each of the different vegetables and the colors in the vegetables represent um, a, a healthy, you know, thing for us. Like, for example, red is heart health and anti-aging. Orange is immuni Im um, immunity. Uh, yellow is for inflammation. Green is for detox. And blue is for brain central nervous system. They, they associate the colors with uh, of the of the vegetables with how it can help your health so i was going to talk about that hello is that grand oh hello g mama grouse how are you doing good to have you with us so nice so at first i was going to talk about that but i've been talking about seeds a lot and i was able to go to the um dollar tree and I got a hundred packs of seeds for 25 bucks, which was great. So we're thinking about bargaining too and how we can get what we need for a little amount of money. Because I don't have a large space, you know, I just have a, a city lot, a good size though, that I don't need a lot of seeds, but I just need enough. And the Dollar Tree meets my needs with that. And so I was thinking of having us discuss Grow What You Will Eat 2022. How much of what you grew in 2021 did you eat? And I was going to talk about that. And then I decided that I need to start thinking about the tools because I was watching, 
I was watching um, Gardening at Creekside, a Creekside Gardening with Creekside, and she was talking about her gardening tools and what we should have in the toolbox. But um, I thought, well, I need put her, gotta go. Oh my God, I want to stay, but I'll watch the replay. Take care, Captain, and everyone. Thank you, Dama. Thank you for even just stopping by. I might just start a little earlier just for you um, on, on Wednesdays. We'll see. But um, thank you for coming by. Yeah, yeah, so good to have you. She's good. I just love my Thelma. <laughs> so um, anyway, I was uh, thinking about, I'm just trying to uh, talk through what I was thinking and why I came up with this topic, but I do want us to cross it over with some of the other topics as well. So what do I need in my garden toolbox? So I heard her talking about that as I was getting ready and what she had. So I pulled out my, um, my journal and started writing down, what do I have? What tools does she recommend and what tools do I have? And I went and I pulled out my tools or some of the tools that I have and, and some of the things that I need. I love these Fiskars. I've had these Fiskars for about five years and they have been durable. I gotta tell you, they last a long time. I just toss them around and I use them. I don't really sharpen them that well, but I do try to clean them before I cut my different plants or if I do any pruning. I try to clean it. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. And they have just, they have just stood the test of time. And they last, I mean, it's the cut is good. Hey everyone, just listening. Hi, Coco. How are you, my sweetie? Yes. So this is my favorite tool. Your tools are important. Yeah, and the tools are important because the tools um, help to make the whole process so much more easier and enjoyable. Now, I got this little tool here from um, the Dollar Tree. I went to the Dollar Tree and I said, well, let me just see you know, I'll try out one of their tools. And of course, right away, um, you know it's not gonna last forever, but then it is a dollar. So I was thinking like for um, new beginners who are just trying out and wanting to know if they wanna get, put their hand in the, the, the gardening basket, you know, to try it out, that to get inexpensive tools might be good just to get started until you really decide, well, this is what I want to invest in. So it's about your budgeting. But there are some really good things that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree. For example, this stuff right here. This is a twisted twist tie with cutter. And uh, they give you two rolls and it's a four dollar. They also have this other type, which had like a soft edge to it. And I really loved that. I ended up buying more but then after a while they ran out and I found some of the same type but in a different store and it was much more money so I felt that it was better for me to get it from them but um, each year you'll see that you're going to need different tools and what do I need in my garden toolbox or toolkit some of the things that I have had in my garden toolkit are the basic things like for example I'm gonna list off some things and if I miss some you can tell me but you have in your toolkit what you find most important what you really need in your garden because everyone's garden is different that's nice with the extra pack of ties for a dollar yeah now I got this last year so I don't know if they have some this year but I'm gonna go back uh, I was just so excited about the seeds that I really didn't pay attention <laughs> too much about the other things. Hey, hey, Ramba, how you doing? But I think that they are really a good place to get the ties. They have like little trellis-like things. That That's good also. I used some of that in the garden uh, with my peppers to hold up my peppers. And they had um, some other things there as well. So. Instead of going to Home Depot or one of the other box stores and, you know, paying 
much more money for the same thing. As far as your budget is concerned, getting as much as you can inexpensively, I think, is the way to go. And then, whatever you need to fill in, you can go to different stores and find out what, what that is and see what they have. Miss Catherine, I won't be staying tonight. God bless you and all in the chat. Need to grab some sleep. Much love, guys. No problem. Glad that you stopped by. It's okay. It's okay. Um, nice to have you. So, um, the other thing is that, so, so these are the list of the, the tools that I, um, I was thinking of and that, that the other person, the Creekside that she mentioned. And, um, what are the tools that you need? She talked about a basic shovel. Yeah. If you're going to be gardening, it is good to get a shovel. And that, I think you need to get a good shovel. You know, try and get a really good, sturdy shovel. Because you don't want your shovel breaking on you midway. Please like up, like up the live people. Please for this amazing person. She deserves it. <laughs> Thank you, Rambo. Thank you for the good comments. I appreciate it. Um, so the thing is, is that you want, you want to get a good shovel. And at first I had a, a shovel. There are different types of shovels. And I would recommend a shovel that's good for digging up, for cutting, for dividing. Um, a shovel that you're comfortable with. And so you may need to uh, test it out. So I would invest in a good shovel. That's what I think. And then a rake. Um, if you're going to be raking up leaves, because I'm in the Northeast and we have a lot. Good night, Rambo. Um, we have a lot of leaves around, so I will still be sh raking leaves in in the springtime because I have portions of the garden that I've neglected, that I let the leaves stay there. And I do kind of like to um, un uncover those leaves later on in the, in the spring, you know, in the, in the maybe around March or so, because then the, the tulips will be coming up or actually maybe the end of this month, the beginning of March, yeah, because the tulips will start to come up, and that way they'll be cleared. But in the meantime, I don't mind the, the leaves being like a mulch for um, part of my garden, or at least the areas that I have some more tender plants. So that means that I need to have a good rake, and, um, and, a, and even a small rake, that can get into those little um, little spots. I need to get one of those. Uh, I don't have one of those, and I found that um, it is kind of difficult to clear certain areas unless you have a small rake instead of having to bend down. Now I'm trying to avoid bending as much. I'm getting older, and um, I I want the tools that can make my life. The most easiest and I have this other special rake that actually is so easy to use you can stand up and and just um, it just opens up and it grabs the leaves and I'm able to then pick them up and uh, put them put the debris in, in the containers so I want a good a good rake and then clippers. I was talking about the clippers. So these are my Fiskars. I love this one, but you may like a different one. It's good to get a good, good uh, clippers, but um, it depends on your price range. You might want to check out different ones and see which one is best for you. Then there are loppers. And with my garden, I have a lot of trees or with little saplings that need to calm down. And before they get too big or the branches get too long, I'm going to need to go through and clip all of those different um, tree limbs. So I need a good loppers. Hey, Deborah, you came in the house. Good to have you, Deborah. How are you? Welcome. And then the handsaw. Now, any of you have a handsaw? Do any of you have a handsaw? I was going to purchase a handsaw last year, 
but I decided not to because I got the lapis instead. But this year, I think I might get a handsaw that might make it easy. M. Mikoria, welcome. I know I'm butchering your name, but excuse me. Mimi is me. Uh, M. Me. Cora. How are you, Cora? Good to have you with us. Thank you for coming and joining us. <laughs> you have a handsaw. Um, is it easy to use, Cassie? Do you find it easy to use? I'm sure it's a good tool to have. I'm well. I got my handsaw from Dollar Tree. You did? Wow, Deborah. I gotta check that out. Maybe they'll have one for me. Um, I don't think we have hand saws in, the, in our Dollar Tree. So I might have to go to Home Depot. But I think this year, that is one of the tools that I want to use in, in my garden. I want to get a hand saw for some of those more tougher um, um, wood pieces and branches that I don't have to, um, that I can't use the, 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 look in the tool section. Okay, I will. And then they have gloves. Now, Dollar Tree, definitely. Gloves are great there. I love their gloves. Um, and I love the ones with the sort of plastic um, backing. I prefer shrub pruners. Okay, shrub pruners. Okay. I need to get some of those. Uh, and really looking at the tools that will make your work easier because that's the whole idea we want to make our work easier and di there are different um, pruners too that can make like if you have roses like we do uh, when you're cutting the roses because you're going to need to cut them back and and make sure that you cut out all the dead uh, wood and so forth it's good to have a good pair of um, shrub pruners and I did. I had. I got myself a Fisker shrub pruner, but the problem is, is that, uh, and I had it for a while, and I used it so much that it got dull, you know. So that's the other thing: ha finding a way to um, sharpen your different tools. That's that's the other thing: being able to sharpen the tools. Um. And she added on, I, the other thing that I'm thinking of getting is the wheelbarrow or a garden cart. I definitely got to get a wheelbarrow because we've been using, I mean, <laughs> I, we, it helps to build up our, um, our muscles, but my husband and I, we don't have a, a garden cart, a wheelbarrow. And we've been using buckets to carry dirt on compost from one area to the other. And it's a lot of work. After a while, it, it really, you know, you feel it. Um, and I did that last year when I had the wood chips. I used the bucket. just, But the, the, the wood chips were light during, uh, when it wasn't raining. But when it was raining, say I wanted, it, it rained the night before, and I wanted to use it, use the, or gather the wood chips. It was really difficult. It was heavy because the wood chips were wet. And so a wheelbarrow is something I definitely have to get this year is a wheelbarrow. Um, she mentioned the pop-up bags. Invest in the Gorilla Cart. Okay, the Gorilla Cart. You have one of those? I've seen them um, on uh, Garden Answer. She's... she's um, she showed and demonstrated them a lot, the gorilla carts. So I'll check that out, the gorilla carts. So either a, a wheelbarrow or a gorilla cart. Then there's the pop-up bags. Now, I don't use the pop-up bags. I just use the garbage trash bags, you know, the brown bags, that um, the garden waste bags. Um, but I've seen a lot of other people use the pop-up bags. Good evening, Miss Catherine, Gardening Friends. Hey, Beverly, how you doing? Good to have you. Yes, I'm glad you came. Hop, uh, hoping to get a gorilla cart one day. Yes, yeah, so there are some things. I mean, when you're getting serious about this gardening process, 
Just need that stuff just to make life easier. Um, and um, the other things that they talked about, uh, plant supports, which is good, like tomato cages, poles, sticks, stakes, trellises, all of that is necessary. Um, I have quite a few tomato cages, so that's not big on the list. But this year, what I'm thinking of is a trellis. And I've seen people use cattle pa panels, cattle panels, because um, I'm in the city. We don't, you know, I don't have a tractor supply store. Um, but maybe something to trellis those cucumbers and start do more of the vertical gardening, you know, gardening up versus out. Uh, so like cucumbers can use a trellis. Uh, beans, if you have beans. Got some garden clips from the Dollar Tree over a week ago. Yeah, the garden clips, that's a great idea. Yeah, um, that's, those are just, you know, sometimes you just think of those little things that you need just to help to, to um, make it easier. Um, and the garden clips are a good good thing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I got the the twist ties from last year, but I'm going to check out the garden the garden clips too. And and then of course watering cans. I I've bought a couple of um, over the years. I've bought almost every year. I end up buying a new watering can, and I just buy um, the plastic kind. Um, but I think I need another watering can because what happens is that um, if any debris gets into the watering can, that it, it blocks the, the mouth section so that it doesn't spray very good. It's kind of like, you know, it gets all cluttered and then it's hard to clean out. So I always tend to get a, an inexpensive watering can to add. Yeah, and so I also have strings or twist ties as well. Is there anything else that you get that you have? Do you all have any particular um, garden tools that are your favorite? Uh, just put it in the chat and uh, we can add it to the list of things that one may want to look out for to um, add to their gardening tool toolbox or toolkits. The other thing that she mentioned is uh, fertilizer. And she said to have good fertilizer. Um, I use for my flowers, I've always used the Miracle Grow, the shake that's in the can that you can shake out, the um, time release one. And I used to use the water soluble one for uh, um, my petunias or annuals and so forth um, but she was talking about biotone which is also good as a fertilizer and i've also gotten some a uh, water fertilizer from roberta's garden and it would come with any of the bulbs and things that i would order from qvc so i'd use that as the word water fertilizer uh soluble fertilizer and that was pretty good also so, a uh, biotone. What do you all use? Fish emulsion is good. Okay, good. Yeah, I was just about to ask. What are some of um, the fertilizers that you all use? And do you all make your own fertilizer tea? Uh, yeah, I have various milk crates around my garden that I sit on when I'm in the garden. Oh, that is a good idea, Deborah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't, I don't um, bend down. I'm not one to kneel, so I don't use you use a kneeling pad. I just crouch down. But after a while, you know, uh, it would be good to have a, a crate. That's a, that's something to think about. Yeah, to get um, a milk crate or one of those crates to sit on. And good gloves. Any others? Come on, people. What else do you all have in your gardens? G Mama grows. I know you, banana water, or oh, banana water and eggshells. Yeah, that's good. Um, I remember my mother used to put together the water, the eggshells, and she would let it sit, and she'd water her house plants with it. So that seemed to help. Gee, Mama Grows, what do you have in your? What do you use for fertilizer? 
And what is what is what is your favorite? Um, your favorite too. You yes, you too, Cassie, and and all of the rest of you. Come on. Seek help as fertilizer. All right, come on, you're doing good. Who else is here with me? Come on, share your secrets. <laughs> We're growing together. Oh, you got to help me out. Come on. Yeah, so this is what we want to look at, the tools, the different tools. And I wrote it all down in my journal. So now, the point is, I use my own plants for fertilizer. Okay, that's good. Me too. <laughs> yeah, and you know, um, one of there was a gardener, I don't know if he's on anymore, Supreme, he talked about composting and drop and clip and, and cut. And there's another guy too, another um, YouTuber, I make compost tea with them. Okay, yes, recycle. Yeah, what do you mean by recycle, Sonia? You got to be, give me some more information with that. Recycle what? <laughs> um, but you make compost tea, G Mama? Mm -hmm. So how do you make G, um, the compost tea? Do you put it in a, a pail or do you have a special bottle or how much do you make? And um, do you have a video on that so that we can come and visit and see it? Um, but all of that, yeah, that is part of the compost tea. His name is Hugh, and he is, there is a, a gardener whose name is Hugh Richards. I think he's in England, and he does a lot of the compost tea and talks about cut and drop and um, using your own garden leaves and, and waste. Of course, they don't have any insects and bugs on it, but dropping it right there in the garden and instead of um and then also compost yeah and i collect rainwater you do oh my that's good g mama grows is using her own plants to fertilize yes that's what she said and uh she used yeah um i'm starting to permaculture first of all comfrey's russian block sterile type wow that's good yeah permaculture is the is a new term that's really on now and i've been listening to this um youtuber who talks about permaculture and she's really good um and uh, that whole process of really thinking about your your garden and uh, nate and what is really um most helpful you know that is um productive i have five gallon bucket that's for Bokashi, but filled with compost tea. Okay. Yeah, they say that the compost tea smells bad, too. <laughs> but if you're willing to, with the comfrey and everything. But, um, yeah, so it's like um, you add water, so much water to so many leaves, and let it sit for a while, and then you use it. Um, do you water once a how, when do you fertilize? Do you fertilize every time you water? Or do you fertilize at a, a set schedule? Gee, Mama. How do you do your fertilizing? What's your process? It, it does smell awful. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. I could imagine. And, um, and that, but, but then it's really good for the, for the vegetables. Now, that's what I think is the best thing to do, the uh, organic um, the teas and so forth, and fertilizer teas for your vegetables. But with, yeah, every week since I grow in containers. Okay. So that would really help with the container garden. Yeah, with the eggshells, the greens, and all of that. Um, my, when I, um, what I do in the spring is like my roses, I'm now setting up a Bokashi container and worm bin, just setting those up. Okay, that's good. Um, that's that's really good. Uh, that whole, yeah, hi, Miss Catherine and Chad. How are you, Rachel? Rachel, do, how do you fertilize your plants? Uh, for me, with the roses, 
the roses we use um, miracle Grow, and then they have this other rose food that I, I buy for the roses and for the flowers and annuals but of course for the um, for the vegetables I don't want to use any um, synthetics or anything like that any fertilizers I'm really kind of hesitant because I want it to be as natural as possible but I use the um, I use the compost to really handle that the compost you're putting a lot of compost uh, I use that for the um, for for fertilizing the vegetables now so do you use the same fertilizer I also have vermicompost that I used all right wow you guys are really good <laughs> yeah um, I use whatever I get on sale yeah I like compost and manure yeah that cow manure that in the yellow bag um, we bought that a couple of times yeah I kind of use it I kind of don't uh, I really love compost I don't know but you are. I really I really love compost um, I think that it, if 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 the plant if the soil is healthy with good compost that the plants will do well and then mid mid throughout the the time I just add some more freshen it up and give them some more um, but I might try some of those teas and things but the roses and the flowers and the annuals, I do use the Miracle Grow, and occasionally uh, we would get the liquid um, Miracle Grow and use that on them because I know I'm not eating them. I figured it's okay, but maybe it, it might not be good for the soil. I don't know, but um, I am thinking of becoming more organic and using more natural means to fertilize my annuals because they need and require a whole lot and what she was off she was talking about was biotone you know the tones um, that kind of uh, the sperma biotone uh, fertilizers that that would be good so I might just switch off to that type of fertilizer yes I've been growing my composting game better every year that's good yeah I think that that's the way to go and I really like this guy. His name is Hugh. Um, he is, um, I think, Hugh Richards. Richardson? Richardson like that? Hugh? He is in um, in England. No, England. In the UK. And uh, he his information is so rich. It's so good. And I like what he tells. Last year, I got hold of some really good organic compost from Ace Hardware. It was so good that the tomatoes self-seeded in it. Wow. That is cool. Yeah, Ace Hardware. Corey. Yeah, that is really good. Um, but that's something to look out for. And as a, as Rachel was so, oh, yeah, I've seen his videos. Yes. Wow, yeah. Um, he is really, really good. And he also has lessons. He gives some um, some lessons too on Teachable. He has some really good in. Um, he's giving free information uh, on gardening, but I just love watching his. Make sure to wear a mask when using using Biotone. It has a fine dust. Protect your lungs. Okay. Yeah, I you know I watch um, some of the gardeners like. Um, Laura and uh, and Moya, a garden garden addicts, and when they're throwing that biotone around, it's just so soft and dusty. I I wonder sometimes if they're inhaling that stuff. So that's a good point, Rachel. That is a really good point. So that is what I wanted to talk to you all about. That what do I need in my garden tools? And then toolbox and to to start thinking about that because um, I know that usually by mid when you're trying to look for some tools and different things that you need 
if you go to the same gardening stores and so forth in, in June, everyone is looking for them. And so by the time you get it, it's all sold out. So now's the time to be aware of your tools and try and, and get them. Or, you know, sometimes they have tools on sale at the end of the gardening season to be proactive. Uh, so at the end of the season, you might want to think about what tools you need and pick them up. And that's what I did also. Like I got myself a hard rake um, from Ocean Job Lot and uh, there's some others. I tried to have two so I can have a backup. Yes. Yeah, it's good to, um, to yeah, to have, to buy multiples of it, of whatever it is, especially if it's your favorite tool. Yeah, you see a cloud up near their face. It drives me. It's when I see it on their videos. Yeah, it is. It is very, um, I, I wonder about that too myself, about the, um, the biotome and um, it clouding up like that. And then they're inhaling it and they seem to use so much of it too um, that I think using a mask is a good idea. And yes, G Mama, when you have a good tool, buy two of it. Oh, the other thing is a good sprinkler. I purchased a soil pH tester to put in my garden kit. Oh, you did. I've, I've, I know many people recommend that, but I don't, um, yeah, and it's good to do, and I think it would help, um, but I don't think I'm at that level yet to want to invest, <laughs> even though I'm talking about soil, I just, I just know that um, good compost is good. I just bought two totes to store my gardening stuff in. Yes, Deborah. good point that you can have all these tools, but where are you storing them? That is a good point because sometimes I can't find my tool. I said, where did I put that? And also even walking around the garden, you know, sometimes you just drop it here or drop it there. And if you, you don't remember where you left it, sometimes I'm searching around trying to find my tool. But if I have a container, sometimes like if I'll use a pot, um, and I will drop it in the pot. Yes, pH testing is important. Yes, it is. It is important. But yeah, but also, so that might be a good idea to get one of those cat caddy things and use that as a way of carrying it around with you to put your tools in so that you don't lose your tools, especially after investing in, in some good tools. Yeah, those totes are wonderful. Yeah, that I think that's a great idea, uh, getting the totes. So let me write that down. Did I write that down? Yeah, I'm going to write that down. Get me a, a garden tote. Uh, tool. Tool tote. For tools. I like that. That is very practical. I love that. Um, the other thing too is that, you know, when your your garden holes, your watering holes, Walmart has them for seven dollars today. Okay, Walmart. Um, the the garden hose. You know, the every time I'm I'm buying a new hose or the other end of the hose, and I think that I need to to just invest in a good watering hose i'm talking about the end of it also good to check out thrift stores for baskets yes that's a good one yeah that's true and you know i like going to goodwill so i am going to check them out the watering hose the hose the uh the what is that the the watering head for the hose and a good hose. Yeah, I, it seems like too that every year I end up having, well, not last year, because we got a really, I definitely need another water hose. Yes, I got a nice, my husband bought a nice, big, thick one. The only thing is it's as heavy as ever, dragging it here and there. I actually wear a tool belt. I can't take looking through containers. Oh, okay. 
that is that's interesting. A tool belt. Woo. That's that's good. That's good. That's good. That's a good idea. To get a tool belt or something to, to carry it around. Yes, Chloe K. I shop the thrift stores from a basket. That's good. That's good. That's good. I, I think that this has really been helpful. I hope that it's been helpful for you too as well. That you are um that's a great idea. Yes. Um that you will have um you're getting some good insight too of what to look for and so you know this all helps us to be more intentional when we go and shopping that we're not just picking up any and everything or the same things that we've always picked up before but now we're really looking at well what do i really need and what that does it helps with our budgets because now we can budget for what it is that we need or we can know well i can pick up a few of these and um I need it and I can get inexpensive, you know? Yes, I keep my tools in a specific place until the middle of the season, then they're everywhere. <laughs> I don't think you're alone with that, Deborah. I think a lot of us do that too. Yeah, keep an eye out on your, your cubs. We have picked up several holes uh, several hoses people were throwing out. Oh, curbs. Oh, the curbsides. Okay. And um, they, so that that is another thing. What are some of the other things that you've done? Because I know <laughs> curbs. Sorry. Yeah, I, got, I figured it out. Um, uh, I know that um, that some of you have become creative too. Have you ever found yourself curbside shopping? Yeah. <laughs> have you all ever um, used things to, um, it was meant for one thing, but then you ended up using it as in a, in a creative way? Sometimes I just need a new connector. Yeah, that's true. Um, see, you're very creative. Uh, Rachel, so you're able to use and reuse and recycle, and that is really good too. Of course, the pots. Uh, when I get pots, and I had a whole lot of pots, my husband threw out some of my pots. Don't let me say it too loud, but he went and he threw out my pots. I was kind of upset, but um, you know, really using your pots for planting. I have picked up planters, some nice hanging baskets last summer. Yeah, and um, that that's really good. I'm cheap. <laughs> no, you are creative in your thinking. And, uh, oh, man, I use a small laundry basket to wash my harvest in the yard. Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, I would be fuming. <laughs> I try not to, because <laughs> I don't want anything to mess up my spirit, you know? I got to keep my spirit right. Yes, I just picked up a tricycle and placed it in my garden to hold plants. Wow, that's creative. You know, you got to keep the peace, you know, and I got to keep the peace. My garden is my sanctuary, and I cannot allow anything or anyone to disturb my peace. Yes, so I just let it go. But it just came up just now. I learned from watching YouTube some of those uh, allotments. Yeah, the allotments, they are very creative. And uh, using, um, watching them helps a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do we have for time? Oh, there's one other topic that I wanted to, I actually have two more. I hear you, Deborah. Uh -huh. I started off with good intentions. <laughs> um, so I wanted to uh, actually talk about one other thing, or actually there's two, and I was figuring I would um, save it for next time. So let me talk about this one. Half of my garden, half of my garden pots and decorations come from curbside shopping. Yeah, yeah. So that is that's really good, and that whole idea of permaculture and 
working together with other gardeners and so forth. And the thing is, is that now you have an eye for what is valuable. So you're able to pick up the good stuff and going to the goodwill and, and so forth is, is such a good thing. Oh, there's a troll, Hudson James. I don't know who he is. Thank you, Sonia. You got him good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, this, this is something that I want to ask you all. How much of what you grew in 2021 did you eat? How much of what you grew did you, did, that did you eat in 2021? For example, um, what did you grow and did your family or others help you eat it? And how did you preserve what you grew? I figured that's a good topic for next time. Renee, RB Garden, baby has a good video on the marketplace garden items. Renee, okay, I'll check her out. Renee, RB Garden, baby. Everything I see, I want to grow. Something in it, Deborah. <laughs> yes. So, you want everything you see that you want to grow something in it? I ate. <laughs> so, next week, I think I'm going to save this for next week because this is going to be a big topic, you know? Grow what you will eat in 2022 that's going to be next week's topic and i know that you all are going to come and tell me if you're a canner a freezer or a freeze freeze dryer what kind of how do you preserve your fruits and your vegetables the garden nanny not baby ha 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 why did it change it i don't know but garden nanny i love renee and she has a lot of wonderful good um information well i grow a lot of flowers too yeah and that's what I, I of course you know i'm a flower person but also i have been making i went through and i made a list of what did i do with it that's why i'm so glad that i have this journal because i'm still hooked on writing on paper oh here it is i made a list of all of the different um the different vegetables that I grew or that I want to grow and that we ate. And what was, and then I want to talk about what was successful and what wasn't. I'm trying to go flowers this year. So um, next week, we're going to talk about vegetables. That's a heads up. But this week, yes, we're going to grow flowers. What? Um, this is what I, okay, I was looking at writing on paper makes it feel official. No, writing in my notebook makes it feel like I can find it instead of trying to find out where did I put this piece of paper. Becoming a Farm Girl is a lovely channel for urban gardening. Okay. Um, I don't know her. And in my journal, I also have a page for uh, websites and YouTube channels that are really good. So that's something else we can talk about. Um, start documenting or listing your favorite YouTube channels so that we can we can check them out what did you call farm girl I'm gonna write her down farm girl and check her out now of course Brampton Gardner is a great seed starter she's been doing her seed starting oh thanks uh, Chloe I'll check it out I'm a townhouse, so so small garden space here. Yeah, and um, we can figure out, we can help one another because there are some really good, good information out there. And then these people are offering um, courses and different things that can help. Um, and that might be more applicable to our type of gardening and our zone. That's the other thing. Because you want to get people who are in um, our zones or, well, or close by it. Because um, sometimes I, I try to relate to the zone eights and the zone nines. But it's, it's kind of hard, you know, because we're so up, way up here in the coal area, the zone six. So I know zone five people, I can get and garner a lot of information from them. And even zone seven... Um, 
they're still, uh, you know, close enough. But, um, you know, when it gets to the really warm <laughs> places, it's kind of hard because they can already start to sow and do all of the things that they can, you know, they want to do with the garden. But I can't do it just yet. So, right, I've been looking for gardeners around my zone 6A. Yeah, yeah. So if you know of other gardeners around um, 5, 6, zone 7, yes, I'm zone 6A. You are too, Chloe, good. Yeah, so we have to, um, so if you know of others that, 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 um, that garden in our zones, other YouTube channels, um let's share that so that we can watch them and of course we have each other because you're in our zones too do you have a do you have a garden channel um are you actively videoing yeah yes yeah 5a here yes yeah. 6a depending on so brampton gardener and uh if you have not um if you have not subscribed to Brampton Gardner, subscribe to her channel. Uh, do you have your subscribers? I know she's she's working on getting her numbers up and uh, she has really good content and she's very funny too. <laughs> she makes you laugh and enjoy it. So if you want a good laugh, join Brampton Gardner. Yeah, Randy Battle of gardening with skinny boy randy is awesome but thank you all for hanging around good night to everyone sorry about that sorry that it it it, it did that to us right when, when i was about to wrap up anyway but for those of you that are here um yeah let's continue to grow 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 together in Catherine's garden and home, that's right. Grow, 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 grow together. In Catherine's garden and home, uh-huh. Grow, 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 grow together. Right, Chloe, thank you for coming and joining us. Catherine's garden and home. I don't know what's going on, but I've been having internet issues. But I am grateful that you all came on, and I'm glad, glad that it lasted for the time that it did. And for those of you that are still on with me, yay, you're back. Yes, I'm here, honey. <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? This can't happen to me. Not now. I didn't get to say goodbye to everybody. But anyway, I did cover, yeah, I covered everything that I pretty much wanted to talk about. But I did have this other one, like what is, um, you know, and this is so much hey yes 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 i don't know what happened you're here that's good i don't know what happened to the internet there but i'm so, so glad that you're back but uh I'm, we're not going to stay long hey cheryl how are you yes welcome 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 yeah so i wanted to ask you this i find myself singing this in my garden you do <laughs> that's good tamara <laughs> have a pleasant evening princess how are you thank you so for stopping by and and coming to visit with us i'm sorry about that right when you came on and we were having such a great conversation but anyway I wanted to also say, what will the nation's 3 million gardeners be growing in their homes and gardens in 2022? That 2021 caused such a craze in gardening and people are finding that they want to um, grow their own food. And that is another important topic to take this serious because many people uh, don't have, um, they're going to the uh, supermarkets and they are seeing a shortage around the country. And one way that you can make sure that you are self-sufficient and taking care of yourself is to make sure that you uh, are gardening and growing your own food. Plus, it's just plain old healthier. So that is something that we can talk about at another time. But I just wanted to bring that topic up. To take this seriously, get, gather as many seeds as you can gather the, the resources that you need 
because for one thing, there's a demand on it right now. And there are going to be even more people gardening as the days go on, as um, the years go on, because of the situation that we find ourselves in with uh, food shortages and people doing diff you know, different things happening. So you are ahead of the game. You've already started to put your gardens together. And it's so it's important for us to really think through what do we want? How do we want our gardens to be? And what are we looking for in it? We want to create good garden design. And we know that good garden design doesn't have to cost a lot in terms of budget and environment, right? And uh, they said the two common themes this year for 2022 is well-being and sustainability. Well-being and sustainability. That people are looking to their gardens as a place of therapy, well-being, uh, and they want to be able to know that they can feed themselves. With bad, if push comes to shove, they can go out into the gardens and, and gather some tomatoes or peppers or, you know, eat from their gardens. So gardens have become our sanctuaries, our well, well-being benefits, are the comfort in uncertain times to be able to go out and relax and to think and to, um, you know, just relax in our gardens, to... To, to get our minds off of the, the confusion that's in the world today. And it, it's wonderful to be able to tend our plants and grow our vegetables and um, also gain gardening friends like you. Oh, I am so happy to have you as my gardening friend that we can come together, learn from each other and grow together. And so I'm going to say good night, but I am so happy that you all came back on and you're here and that we can grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden at home. Come on, grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden at home. So welcome, welcome to my home. Welcome to my garden when I'm able to get out and uh, let us continue to just have a good night. Yeah, everyone greet each other. Good night, everyone. Come on, good night, gardens are me. Good night, Bev. Good night, Sonia. Good night, um, Deborah. Good night. Let's see, who else is here? Good night to all of you. And those of you who, who laughed, Yankee Sister was with us, Sonia, um, Chloe, Chloe, thank you for coming and sharing your insights. That was so nice of you. Yes, Cassie, my sweet, and uh, G Mama Girls. She's always wonderful to have you with me. And Ra Rochelle was here, Rachel was here with us. Uh, Rambo stopped in earlier. Coco came by. She was listening. So good to have you. M. Mikora, welcome. Good to have you. Um, yes, Garden Family, Sonia, my sweetie. Oh, you all are so good to me. And you make me happy. And I really appreciate you. I'm just scrolling to see who else. Um, Yes, and then those of you who are going to listen to the replay, thank you so much for listening. And uh, make sure you give a thumbs up, put a comment in the comment section. And you may not have ma ma made it here for the chat, but you can also comment in the comment section and let me know what you are growing in your gardens. And let me also know what are your tools? What are the tools that you are going to gather uh, so that you can have a good gardening season. What do I need in my garden toolbox? Write it down in the comments section and let me know what you're going to get and add in your um, toolbox for those who are going to listen to the replay. And uh, share the wealth because we all want to grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's garden and home. That's right. Grow, 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 grow 
all together in Catherine's garden and home. Well, let me bless you. May you be blessed as you go through and meditate and think about what you're going to be putting in your gardens. May you have sweet dreams. Think about your flowers, your flowers that you're going to grow, G Mama, and, and the rest of you all. I'm still debating on which rose bush I'm going to. Cheryl, good night, everybody. How, how, uh, have a good night. Yes, thank you, Cheryl. I'm still thinking about what I'm going to put as far or uh, get as a, a rose bush. What rose bush I'm going to get. I've been looking at my David Austin catalog there. And remember that um, you only, you know, we're here just for this moment. Let us enjoy it. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy your life. And uh, don't be afraid to treat yourself as well as use uh, wisdom and stewardship that we uh, don't waste our money either. Uh, but we use it and put it to good use. All right. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time right here at Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. Bye, my lovelies. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>